All right, man. So give us your name real quick. Uh, Nick Jeffords. Okay, and, and we met you today. You and uh, you can see yourself here, so it's a little bit easier. Yeah. So you came to our booth today, and uh, you stopped by, and like instantly, we kind of vibed out with you, and you did with all the crew. And I saw you, and I was like, oh my gosh, this dude looks like he'd be Dean's best friend, because you had the the Jordan Supreme hat on, all your gear on, and you're like super intrigued with our brand, but on the aspect of like style, right? So. Yeah. Um, We'll get into like what we did for the rest of the day, but coming as uh, coming from you as a person who like works for Nike and you like shoe releases, you like street clothes, you like having things that people can't have. What is it that kind of drew you to our brand? You know, it's uh, it's the whole culture aspect. You know, like I've said, I've said this to, before to you. You know, uh, when I see other people wearing your brand, uh, I know what they're all about automatically. Uh, when I see other people wearing other brands, I don't know what they do for the like what they're doing th throughout their day. But when I see people wearing caffeine and kilos, I, I I typically know that they go to a box. They probably have a coach. They probably work out probably a, a good amount of time. Uh, and that's what I do for fun, man. I, I I hang out with people that are constantly trying to motivate themselves. Um, and, and I see it just buy a t-shirt. You know, I'm like that guy's got probably a good life. You know. That's awesome, man. Now, um, with our brand too, um, it's cool that it means so much to you in that way or that regard or that's how you view it. But on the other side too, just on a simpler side, um, what is it maybe about the way that we've uh, come out with our clothes or our apparel that drew you to it being that you like such high fashion? Sure. You know, I mean, I'm not afraid of it. I'm kind of a uh, hype piece. You know, I, I think that's the, people are afraid of it. I like stuff that people can't grab. Um, and I love how you guys, um, you guys sent emails and you're like, oh, we just dropped this. You know, that's the, you guys are sticking with the same lingo that I speak with. Uh, it's almost like you're communicating to me. And for a consumer base, that's the best way is to, to grab me a hold of me, is to speak directly to me. And I feel like that's what this brand is doing, is speaking directly to me, you know. That's cool, man. Now, um, you're out cheering on one of your friends this weekend. Who, uh, what athlete is that and who, who is she to you? Uh, it's Carly Matthews. So Carly Matthews was actually a, a milieu counselor for when I went into uh, treatment. So I'm in recovery, almost have six years in September. Nice job, uh, dude. And, uh, sorry. Yeah. It's all right. No, it's that was Harrison. Harrison was excited. <laughs> Continue. Hey, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good thing to be excited about. I, uh, completely changed my life, man. And, uh, she, she helped me, uh, get into a, a CrossFit X Factor. It's the gym I go to. She helped me with a membership. I clean the gym like twice a week and it's been going for like three years almost. And, completely changed my life you know I didn't even know how to work out before CrossFit that's cool man so you kind of just now just mentioned that too and you mentioned to me earlier so um, <clears throat> you obviously said that you went through a recovery period and, and there's actually I think um, a really cool translation to where uh, maybe part of your addictive personality has been able to be manifested through itself now in fitness mm. and you were telling me sure. too like like you how do you pronounce your name Carl Carlene Matthews. Carlene, right? So, like, Carlene was, like, introduced to you through your treatment center, but then you found out that her passion was training, and you kind of made it one of your passions and something, yeah. one of your outlets. Um, what is it about the, the CrossFit community in general um, that kind of drew you to that and that's kind of kept you and kept you intrigued? You know, is it um, your coach? Is it your box? Is it the people? Or what is it? You know, it, it's all of those. It's all of those combined. You know, there's never that one word. It's the feeling that you get. You know, feelings are more contagious than anything. You know, I can't, I can't relate to some things, but I can feel some things. And it's the same thing with the recovery program. It's one person helping another person off the feelings they felt. I might come from one part of the world, but if I feel the same way you feel, I might be able to relate to you. Um, and with that saying, you know, CrossFit has that mentality of like, you know, if I go into a 24-hour fitness and I accidentally see somebody in the, the eyes, or if I'm looking in a mirror and they're like, oh, they're working out, you know, they're going to like, oh, yeah, I'm stronger than you. Yeah. I go into a CrossFit gym and it's not like that. I, they, the first thing I, I can see someone in their eyes, they shake their hand and they're like, dude, how you doing? Like, welcome to my gym. Like, let me take you around. This is like, this is Jake. This is this. You know, it's just such a friendly atmosphere. I never had that before. I had that in the recovery program. And it's such a nice, translucent, like, 
seamless thing of like it reminded me so much of it you know yeah. it's like the same thing I have a family outside of the recovery program and I have a family in the recovery program you know and there some people I, I do CrossFit with that are in the recovery program you know and it's it's an awesome thing for me that's cool you're kind of driving down downtown Portland yeah <clears throat> and you had mentioned that you kind of knew some of the people they were homeless there yeah uh, what were you doing with them and how do you build relationships with those people so for me I worked in uh, access case managing for homeless people for a while you know um, I was helping them like take like to do showers for them to try to get state IDs for them uh, in Oregon um, just kind of simple things that a lot of people just like look past um, you can't get a job without an ID you can't leave uh, most states without an ID um, because you can't can't, you're just stuck here and it's like a constant circle uh, so we try to bring people up uh, and, and and just really like I, I I wish I wish I could say that like I try to help people but really I was just trying to enable them so they can get get on their feet you know that's cool man. to give some love you know I appreciate it and, and uh, I appreciate you today kind of we kind of talked and yeah you're kind enough to be like hey tell me that you you know like hey I've access to the Nike store if you ever been and you took me today that was cool I had a good time with you there we're hanging yeah, out a lot of Got people to, haven't been there yeah I've never been there so yeah. it's kind of cool you know especially having a brand like Caffeine Kilos where you know definitely an influence is, is Nike and the way that they do things so yeah. it was cool for me to see firsthand in one of those buildings but um, I think it's also very uh, genuine of you uh, even though you want to help everybody like actually seeing that like knowing that would be something cool for me to do and then taking me and us, us uh, doing that together if there's um if there's something that I could say about you as well is that I was kind of drawn um, with how uh, genuine you seemed. I mean, I've been around a lot of people that are bullshitters, a lot of people that do a lot of things. I've been in sales for a long time and sure. training with people. And um, I think sometimes it's it's so cool how you can be drawn to somebody. Uh, and I feel like sometimes it's not by accident. It's a little bit more ordained. And so if you were to have something um, that you'd want to tell somebody or tell anyone viewing, You've already expressed how you feel about our brand to me and about how you've helped people and done things. Um, maybe you could reach out to somebody else. Like, is there anything else that you'd want to say, uh, like, of encouragement to anybody uh, if they're watching this video that you'd want to leave them with? It's a tough one, man. Because, like, um, for for me, there's been countless countless of times where I've tried, I've had people come into my life um, and have said that special word. Yeah. And I didn't even notice it until until they said it, you know. And so for me to think of a word and then automatically have the magic words for somebody, yeah, it's hard. It's the hard to bring it up. You know? Yeah. For me, I know that when I was at the very bottom of my life, um, I got out of it, and it was by something greater than my, me, you mm -hmm. know. And it was by the people around me that surround me with love mm -hmm. and cared for me, and then uh, I was able to have the clarity in my life to show like. Wow, man, my life is absolutely amazing. Yeah, you know, um, and, and I just hope that person like can pick themselves up and have and and have somebody hire them themselves. You know, yeah, to to like lead them in the way. You know, if that even makes sense. No, it totally makes sense, man. You know, well, I, I, Nick, I appreciate it. I think that you're an awesome, dude. Yeah, and uh, we'll definitely continue to stay in contact. Uh, and have a lot of fun and we'll see if we can find a way to get you out to the CrossFit Games. Yeah, that'd be tight. That'd be first one, you know? <laughs> Alright, cool. Summer 16, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs>